Okay, got one more video I want to do on that packet. And then it would be good if you got started on some of the homework. And then maybe we could spend some virtual sessions answering questions out of the homework. Okay. So the last page of the packet has you look a little more at graphing. So what we're doing on this is we're going to graph a system of equations in two variables. So we have two equations with two unknowns. We're going to graph them on the same coordinate plane. And we're going to solve by graphing, which means we're going to be looking for the point of intersection. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the y equaling the negative 2x plus 1. And we're going to look for ordered pairs that satisfy that. Let me move that over a little bit more. I'm hoping you can see it on your side too. Okay, so we have y equals negative 2x plus 1. We'll find some ordered pairs that satisfy that equation. Then we'll take the equation 3x minus 2y equals 12, and we'll look for ordered pairs that satisfy that, and we'll get these two lines graphed. Okay? So the first one, actually, if I were going to graph that first equation, do you remember that slope-intercept way of graphing? If you do and you liked that, you could graph the first equation would graph really nicely by just looking at how m is negative 2 and b is 1 because it's already in slope-intercept form. Okay, So if you want to, you could just graph that one by beginning at 1 on the y-axis. And then remember, m stands for moving, moving down 2 and to the right 1. You might do that a couple times because you're trying to hand draw this. So if I go down two and to the right one, down two to the right one, see how I'm getting all these points in that stair step? Could go up two to the left one, up two to the left one. So I'm trying to get enough points where I can draw a pretty decent line. I always have trouble with this when I try to do it on the screen. So let me try. Ugh. Okay. So there's the first one graphed. Now, if, if the slope-intercept means of graphing is not the way you want to do it, you can always come over here and put a zero in. Negative 2 times 0 would be 0, so the y would be 1. You could put like a, a 5 in. Negative 2 times 5 would be negative 9. So if you did negative 2 times 5 plus 1, that would be um, negative 10 plus 1, which would be negative 9. So if I was over here at 5, I should be down here at negative 9. So, of course, I wouldn't have necessarily needed to pick 5, but I was just picking several things. So I could plot the point 0, 1 and plot the point 5, negative 9, and have that same line. Okay? All right, now the other equation has the x and y on the same side, and 3 and 2 both go into 12 evenly. So intercepts would work really well. So I could put a 0 in for the y. And if I did, do you see how I just have 3x equaling 12? And 3x equaling 12 means x would have to be 4. Okay. And then if I let the x be 0, then I'd wind up having the two, negative 2y having to equal 12. And negative 2 times negative 6 would equal 12. That one you might need to see. So let me, let me work that one out. So if I put in a 0 where the x is and work out the equation, putting a 0 in here, this would be gone. I'd have negative 2y equals 12, so divide by negative 2, and y would equal negative 6. Okay? So this would be negative 6, 0, negative 6. This would be 4, 0. And then I'm going to try to draw the line connecting those points. Okay, so it looks like maybe something like that. That would be equation two. So solving the system means looking for that point of intersection. So it appears to be, let me do it in black, this appears to be the point of intersection. So it looks to be to be at two, negative three. Okay, so what you would want to do is check that because you're trying to get it from a graph, so you may not be right. So you're going to plug in negative 3 where the y is, and you're going to plug in positive 2 where the x is, and you're going to see if it works. So negative 3, negative 4 plus 1. 
Does negative 3 equal negative 4 plus 1? Sure does. So it's on the first equation. Now you have to make sure it's also on the second equation. So I'm going to take that one and I'm going to do the same thing. In place of the x, I'm going to put the 2. In place of the y, I'm going to put the negative 3. And that is supposed to be 12 when I'm done. Well, that's 6. That's a plus 6 does equal 12. So I know that is on both lines. That must be the point of intersection and I'm done. Now on this handout, what I did, let me explain. Notice how this has a y and a negative 2x plus 1 like the first equation. And see how this one down here has the 3x minus 2y and the 12 like the second equation. Did that on purpose to minimize the graphing of the lines because I'm using the same lines on all of them. I want our focus to be on this, this new idea of the inequality, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to do two parts when you're doing an inequality. First part is going to be to graph the line. Second part is going to be to shade one side of it. Okay, and then I'm going to show you how to decide which side to shade. Okay, so even though this says in here, even though this says greater than right here, first thing I'm going to do is graph y equals, so the first step is going to be to graph y equals negative 2x plus 1. And when I do, because it's really not allowed to be equal, there's no or equal to, this is going to be kind of like that parenthesis bracket thing, the open versus the closed circle. Since it doesn't have the or equal to, when I graph the line, I'm going to make it dashed. And that's going to mean that it's strictly greater than. Okay, So I'm going to graph the line, and I'm going to dash it. And I'm doing that because this is not or equal to. Down here, when I do this one, see the or equal to? This one's going to be graphed like a solid line, okay? All right, so we already know how to graph y equals negative 2x plus 1. That was the red line from earlier. So, you know, we plotted the 1, then went down 2 into the right 1, or we went all the way to 5 down to negative 9, okay? All right, so let me get that red line on there, but i got to remember to dash it when I do. So the dashing is like telling people that points on the line aren't part of the solution. So you're graphing because that's the only way to show people all the points that make that true. See, there's only one point that satisfies both of these equations. Okay, There's infinitely many ordered pairs that will satisfy this inequality, and they're going to come from one side or the other of this line that we just plotted. Okay, So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to do the shading. All right, so when you try to do the shading, determine which side to shade. Oops, wanted that to be a block pen. There we go. Okay, so we're going to shade. I'll say determine. Well, yeah, I'll just say shade, but here's how you determine it. So one side of the other is going to be shaded. So just pick a point on one side of the line that's clearly on one side of the line. But, you know, don't make it hard on yourself. Just pick something obvious, like, 2, 2, or 0, 0. So I just pick a point that's not on the line, not on the line itself, okay, that's got easy coordinates. I just picked that one for some reason. Then I'm going to go to the original equation, and where the y is, I'm going to put a 2, because I picked the point 2, 2. So I'm going to go to the, um, I'm going to test, I'm going to call it test 2, 2 in the inequality. So put in 2 for the y. Okay, put in the 2 for the x, because that's the point I decided I was testing. And ask yourself if that's a true statement. Is 2 bigger than negative 4 plus 1? That's a question mark. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Is 2 bigger than negative 3? Is having $2 better than being in debt $3? This is true. 
true. Okay, and see where the 0 0.22 is? So shade toward 22, shade toward that point. So the side that contains that point is where all the solutions would be found. And the points on the other side would not work in that inequality. That's how it works. So you're going to graph the line and make it either dashed or solid depending upon the inequality symbol. Then you're going to pick a point not on the line like 2, 2. Plug it into the inequality and see if it works. That tells you whether it's a solution. That tells you how you're going to shade. Okay. All right, so let's move down here to this one. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to graph the line. This time we're graphing the line 3x minus 2y equals 12. We've already done it, so I can do it a little quicker than I did before. The point 4, 0 and the point 0, negative 6. We're on that line. When I connect them, I'm going to do it solid this time because it has the or equal to on it. So it's kind of like the bracket versus the parenthesis back when we had just um, one variable. Okay, so I've done the graph. Now I'm ready to try to shade. So when I try to shade, pick a point. Pick a point that's not on the line. Pick an easy point that's not on the line. So how about this guy? He's the easiest of all. What if I pick that point? It's clearly not on the line. So test if 0, 0 works. Okay, so I'm going to plug in a 0 for the x and a 0 for the y. Okay, so does 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0 wind up being less than or equal to, actually I'm testing the less than really, well I'll say less than or equal to 12. See how that would be 0, that would be 0, you'd have 0, is 0 less than or equal to 12? Well yes it is. That's a true statement. So I need to shade towards 0, 0. So shade towards the point you just tested. So that would be, let me do it in blue. So that would be over here, this, lot, this side. Okay, and see that line, this line would go on forever in both directions and this, all the points on that side would be solutions and then also all the points on this line. And you can't do anything, but you can't list the solutions. All you can do is graph to show people what they look like. Okay. Now, what happens on this problem is I put the two inequalities together. That's called making a system of inequalities. So I'm literally going to take the graph and, and the shading that we did before and put it, put it here. So I'm just getting those. Oops, it's not correct, though. So we had it beginning at 1. Going down two in the right one. Also had five, negative nine. This one got a little washed out here. And it was dashed, remember? And then everything on this side of the line was what we shaded for that one. Okay. Now I'm going to graph the blue one. Okay, the second one in blue. That one is the one where we had the point 0, 4 and the point 0, negative 6, and it was or equal to, so it was allowed to be equal, so we made the line solid. And then we tested a point like 0, 0 and found that it worked, so the shading went this way on that line. Okay. Let me emphasize this is where the line is on the other one. Okay. All right, so now what you do, you have one more step on this problem. What you do is you look at that picture and you need to more clearly identify the ordered pairs that satisfy both equations. So do you see how these two lines kind of make a, almost like scissors? Okay, and you've got like these four areas here, 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 and here. Do you notice how there's only one area that has the marks from both? In between those two, we do it in purple because that's what blue and red would make. 
in between these two. See how there's both purple and red in this region here. So th what I'm doing in purple is where the solutions actually would be. Also, these would be solutions. All the points on this line, because it was solid, and then not that, because the red one was dashed. They won't really care about the boundary, but everything right here, this is where the solutions are. Right there in the middle, okay? The ordered pairs that satisfy both equations, would any ordered pair in there would work in both, okay? All right, so I just wanted to do kind of a concise one-page thing about linear inequalities and systems of linear inequalities. It's like you got a graph to be able to show somebody where all the points are that satisfy the inequality. And back with what you were doing in Chapter 3 and just took a test on, see all the points on this line right here, every single ordered pair on this line, Okay, could have been in that table right there and would have satisfied that equation. So in blue are all the points that satisfy the second equation. In red are all the points that satisfy the first equation. Okay, and then what we wanted were all the points that satisfied both, and that was here in the middle. Okay, and then over here, what I have shaded in red, these are where all the points are that satisfy the inequality. And the points on the line do not work because there's not an or equal to. Over here, I'm showing you that all of these points are ordered pairs that would satisfy the inequality, and all the points on the line would too because of the or equal to. Okay, and then here in purple is the only spot you'd have solutions. This is blue, but it's not also red. It's kind of like the and and or on the job um, example the degree versus the experience. It's kind of that idea. You need where they overlap. All right, guys, that is at least getting through that packet for you to begin working on some. I'm going to try to make sure the homework is as few problems as possible, but enough to give you some experience with it. And then you'll just work on the um, getting ready for a test on this. 